Jorge says, uh, hi, can you help me? I want to buy a project license for two users from my organization that will use Teams with external guests. Is it possible to work well with two licenses? I'm going to say you can have as many licenses as you require to do your job. So you can have a E3 or an E5 with add-ons. So there are a lot of people that will have multiple licenses. Now, depending on with the licenses, and correct me if I'm wrong, y'all, on this one, but on the licenses, whatever, when you're assigned a license, say like you have a license that you only, and this is an example, that you have teams, uh, just regular teams, but you have an add-on that has other things, but with that add-on, you get teams premium. You're gonna get teams premium, even though this one license only is capped at just regular teams. So anything, what is the higher license of your functionality, you will get out of all those licenses, but you can absolutely have multiple licenses within your environment. Now, does it make sense to have like an E3 and an E5? And then add-ons? No, it would be there's, there's, assigned there's, there's an E5, a, there's such a thing called over-licensed and yes. uh, depending yeah. on what you use. But I mean, specifically around project licenses too. I mean, co coming from a project management background, it's like, so yes, depending on how you work, you can have two people that are the PMs in the org that are doing all of the detailed project planning and mm -hmm. everything else that they publish out it's basically like a, like an image or a read only of that. You don't have to have a license to yeah. get access to those assets. They just would not be able to go in and edit a plan right. and create and do those things. So if that is how you're structured and only the, those two people with those licenses would do that, that's great. Um, I, I think all this still, because the other, the underlying, the answer that we want to dive into yeah. Is that I this know. is all changing? This world is changing. Right. Project online um, going away. There's the new planner, which folds a lot of that capability, and Microsoft mm -hmm. is really promoting that capability. And I've not yet explored how the licensing changes or needs to happen for that. Like, do you can yeah. you still have? I would assume with the new licenses um, for for the new planner and uh, to do this kind of project work you could still have the two people that have that premium licenses and they publish those things and the same restriction would be in place but i've again i, I need to look yeah. into that and, and you're 100 yeah. correct with that's how that works you still give licenses with any of the apps and i'm sorry i got the hiccups now all of a sudden that <laughs> you they have more uh, permissions and authority than the others like the read is just yeah, they're the read. admins of project. Yeah. So even though what I call the true functionality of a program manager in the old project is more now, this is the person who manages project, which also means planner, right? But people who are using it day to day and everything are just now the typical end users, as long as they're not doing the creation, they're doing mm -hmm. you know the uh, extensive modification and the connections and the workflows. They're just, they're just users. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got a couple of uh, links associated with this that I attached. Um, one speaking specifically to project 2019, uh, end of life, but uh, yeah. another article that's not Microsoft from uh, some group or company called Land Sweeper that explains project uh, and project server end of life. Yeah. So this is where you'll learn about, you know, getting to planner from project. Um, mm -hmm. And yet it, you know, it's not a complete one to one replacement, but that's the direction yeah. Microsoft's going with this. Yeah, you, they, you just they, need they, to understand. You need to understand um, if, if you have two people that own the plans, the projects that that are building all of the detail and manage that day to day. Um, what are your expectations around the interactions with those plans and with those two people? It, yeah. And so just make sure that you go through and you understand the licenses, the permissions, whether read access is sufficient for those. That'll determine if you're like, no, 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 we need the ability for them to go in and input directly. Well, you may need the additional licenses then if you can have right. other people with right access to those plans. So, yeah, um, yeah just that's something to definitely want to go and investigate. 
Yeah, some of the things that remain to be seen because there's still changes, right? But ultimately, just keep in mind that traditional, what we've been used to for a number of years of project management in project with the online program management and all that stuff, that's changing, right? So it's, you know, the built-in integration with Planner, which then allows you to use the Power Platform to do all these wonderful and great things to help manage these projects. Um, the, I, I truly believe, and Christian, you can tell me I'm wrong on this, that just through the years, how people manage projects have changed. They don't do the extensive program management, big old things. They want to keep it simple because they want Much the people to agile. Yeah, yep. they want people to be able to easily update things so you can get updates and you can and communicate to upper management. And there came a point in the project atmosphere, it became overcomplicated. And essentially now they're looking at it what? again. What? <laughs> and now they're Crazy looking talk. at it to simplify yep. it so people are doing traditional project management in a simple, easy way and be able to communicate it. Well, and and the fact that it fits in with the rest of the teams and planner uh, uh, you know, modus operandi, which is like, if you know, I have the ability to go into my tasks and if there's a task assigned to me in a project in a plan anywhere within the system, I will see all of my tasks, all of my deliverables show up yeah. in that, my view. And that would mm -hmm. also, then I could see those same tasks in my to-do app. So, sure. which I love that that's part of Microsoft's right. bigger vision of that. I, there's a, Sorry, there's a there's a broader religious discussion around project management technology, yeah, you know, around it's, this stuff that that in some ways Microsoft is watering down a lot of the capability, the rich features mm -hmm. there, and that's going to be an adjustment. But in their defense, when it, you look at what the vast majority of organizations want and are using. They yes. don't need all of the power that's in that product. It, so why exactly. is Microsoft building a product, spending that money on employees and time for a product that such a small, tiny little sliver and getting smaller audience is interested in? So they're they're providing for the masses, plugging it into the yeah. rest of the like. So I completely understand. It's yeah. just it's a sensitive topic for those yeah. professional PMs. Yeah, and I've come from where I've used project many, many years. Like, I mean, no offense, yep. I'm old, right? So That's I've how I got into SharePoint was project right? server. Right? Yep. So, and then like planner came to be, and I want to use the new technology. I want to be able to make things easy for my users and, and my team, right? So going to planner, did I find areas that were less than desirable? Absolutely. What I wanted to make changes and all that kind of stuff. But the thing is, is we've been talking about it for years and years and years. The project server that they created that was on-prem and in the cloud was overkill. No one ever used even half of it, let alone a quarter of it. Let's focus except on the Christian. things that everybody, except maybe Christian. Yes. But let's focus on the things that people are using every single day and make it better. So then Planner got to a point to where even I, I mean, like now I have all my planners, I have a number of planners because every every project I have has planner tests, they're assigned people, they get the communications and it's going. But from a project manager standpoint, I now have 20 different plans. How do I go see them every day? Well, it's the beauty of being integrated. I'm using Power Automate, bringing it into a list, and now I have a nice little display. I can update things, and I got Power Flow, uh, Power Automate running in the back end, right? So you're allowed to integrate the other tools to get that big picture, but I don't pay additional licensing because it's already built in. Yep. Right. So I feel like it's now really coming full circle. Things that we use every day, people want every day the easeability of it. And as project managers, we can bring it all together and have that nice little picture, which we've never really had before because it was too overly complicated. There's more. If you've not seen what Microsoft, where they're going with this, go take a look at the, the, the videos. In fact, I'm not sure what's out there. This is one of those areas where 
we need to be careful because there's yeah. things that I've seen as an MVP that are still under an NDA. Um, yeah. But I'll go take a look at and see if there's uh, any video or, or even screenshots of what's coming. <laughs> and I'll yeah. add that into the notes as well. Yeah. Hence In the why immortal words big. of uh, Rooker Hauer, I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Right. Yeah. I try to be as vague as possible because they're just things like Christian said earlier that we can say and we can't say. And sometimes it's a fine line of not knowing. Right. Um, but some of these things, like I talked about, are things I'm doing right now. And I don't have in my business tenant any access that are like MVP only. So I'm speaking from that. Okay.